Hi guys, welcome to Sons of Cain. Uh, this week's video, we've had a request from Sensei Mark Brown, the blind sensei, and he was going on in one of his videos, and um, we'll put a link below so you can see that. It's about distance work. It's about how to locate where your enemy is, um, where you're going to attack, and also if you're describing to a person as sight impairment, how can we start liaising with these guys to say, well, the attack's coming in from the left, but what part of the left? So we hope you like this video, and see you soon. So with the cane, we've got three ranges. So we've got long range moves, medium range, and we can bring it in so we've got close in moves. So when we're, doing, we're talking about long, medium, close in, it's covered. What we're going to be looking at here is the 10 to 2 position. So 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and anything in this range. At the moment, Callum's at my 9 o'clock, so he's directly on my left shoulder. If I can't see him, and I put my arm out, I can't feel him, he's going to be in a long range situation. I choke up the cane, possibly get it, but I haven't got much power there. So these are just little things to think about when you're playing with the cane and working about with your distances. So with Callum, coming in, I said, my good old fashioned clearance swing is going to come through. Nice long range attack. He's at my 12 o'clock position now, directly in front of me. I can see the attack. I've got a nice clearance swing covers that range quite nicely. We talked about this more, but we're not gonna worry about that too much there today. If it goes for the grab, so I'm here, his right hand has gone to my left shoulder. What I've done with my cane is I've pulled the cane so my hand is mid-grip halfway down the shaft. And in this instance, I've got the crook, crook pointing forward. The crook is up, tip is down. From here, there's so much I can do. I can feel his arm, I know where it is. So straight away, if I put my left arm up to his elbow, I can feel his elbow, rub my hand, I can feel the cane onto the hand, I can pull down, I found his elbow, I've got my release. I've got a fulcrum here, so keeping the, the crook on the elbow, I can do a straight punch, so if the cane doesn't hit him, my arm will. I'm not too concerned about where my target's going to be. I can aim higher, I can aim lower. Hands on, I always like it when people do this, I know where they are. The hands on the shoulder, I can control it with my free hand, my left hand. If I just do a straight punch with the cane, the cane is vertical, the crook is going to hit. For safety, I'm not going to go for the face here, but just so you can see, if I aim, the crook hits the, the person, the ugi. If I can keep that motion forward, the tip is going to swing in as well. And what you have end up with is the cane vibrating. So go top, low, strike. If I go for the face, it's a good technique. If I go at an angle, it's going to be shoulder, sternum, hip. Because the cane has gone over the shoulder, I can then hook the crook into the shoulder blade and I've got my control. I can go around the neck, just bringing it straight up. So from the floor, a crook vertically up. I can feel when the crooks hit the body, it will slide up the sternum, under the chin, and then I can bring it back down again. So even if I can't see my opponent, I can feel where he is. So that's nice and easy, 12 o'clock, mid shaft grip. I've got a variety of techniques I can use. Bringing it down, dragging, pulling, striking. So most fights invariably, and we do a lot of research on this, and we talk to a lot of people, we talk to the police, uh, we talk to a lot of, we say bouncers, but are they bouncers, door managers, I, I don't know what the correct term is these days. Talk to a lot of doormen, and a lot of fights are here, so they are very, very close. So if they are here, they're, again, he's done it, he didn't even need to be told, he splayed his arms out, he's in my face, so he's there. So I can't do a big swing, so I'm gonna do some short techniques. 
All I can do, feel where his arm is. He might be touching me, I don't know what he's doing, he might be controlling my arm. All I'm going to do is feel where his shoulder is, so I know where he is, I know where my cane is. I've choked it up to the top of the shaft, just below the crook, and all I'm going to do is hug him. I grasp the cane with my free hand, which in this case is the left hand. If I pull in and squeeze, it's very uncomfortable for him. What I'm going to do is roll the cane and twist at the same time. When I did the hug, for safety, I grabbed him around the torso. If I lift it up, attack the neck, I can go across the temple, the face. It all depends on the situation. If he's too close, I quite like this one. I bring the cane between the body. So the cane is between me, it's between my uki. So I'm just flicking the cane up so it's separating our bodies. I pull my hand to my hip. My left hand grabs the tip of the cane and I'm pushing the cane against his hip on a balance point, clearing him away. So I can either push him that way or if I've got the distance, I can push on the hip and clear him away that way. He's actually done a grab, so his right hand's grabbed me. He's actually gripped onto my jacket. As before, with my free hand, my left hand, I feel where the arm is. I'm going to bring my cane over, so it's going to go from my three o'clock position over to the nine o'clock position to my free hand. I'm going to grasp the cane, and again, I'm just going to hug him. I'm going to roll that cane into my body. I can feel it, he's dropped down. Keeping that tension on, I can then punch with my right hand and use the crook as a makeshift knuckle duster and attack whatever target is there. I don't need to look where I'm striking with this because I know, because I can feel the arm, I can feel the body, I can see where it's going to go, I can feel it. Once I've struck with that side, do two attacks, do one, it's up to you. I can then reverse it, use the other side, striking with the tip. I know where that is, I can feel the tip, drag it down the neck, you can feel it come clear. As soon as it's clear, I can drive it forward. So what you want to do is practice these, but keep your eyes closed. And then you'll get a feel for where your opponent is, where he's moving, where the body's going, and then you can adapt the technique to suit that particular situation. Right guys, I'm gonna put a little link up top here. It's a video that we shot up at Mill Hill Dojo with Sensei Mark Brown. Um, and he did a little drill with us, well actually with Chris, where Chris closed his eyes and Mark, through punches and kicks, and Chris had to decide where this kick was, what height, what direction, and stuff like that. So, it's not superhuman power, it's actually learning how to listen. The trouble is, in real life, we've got loads of distractions. Uh, there's loads of background noises going on, so sometimes you can't rely on that sound. So what we're going to look at now is that I'm in the chair, um, and this can be a restaurant as well, or a train, or a bus, or anything like that, where you're actually seated. So for this one, I'm just going to turn left on. Now my 12 o'clock is facing Chris. Now if Chris walks into me, I've now got him in my personal space. As we wing chun, as soon as you feel the force, you can then work with the force. So if Chris, with his right arm on my left shoulder, pushes or pulls, you can feel it. You can put your hands up and you've got enough idea where the elbow is, you've got a rough idea where the shoulder is, and you know that in 12 o'clock position, you've got your main attacker. Okay? Now the thing Mark Brown was asking was, when do we strike with a cane in, say, a crowded situation? So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask Chris to take one step back a sec, we're going to bring Callum in, and Callum is going to be our innocent bystander. Now Callum's automatically just stood here, and it could be a situation where we're in a bar or, or whatever. Now if I had an aggressor, and he was verbal, and I heard him become aggressor, I've got the cane strike. But as you can see, poor Callum is being here. Okay? I do have, as Chris has mentioned before, what they call a mid-range. Now the mid-range is not full arm extent. You may have choked up your, the shaft of the cane. They've got 
say half distance towards you. And you do have like control techniques. At this point, I've got the cane roughly about the solar plexus in Chris's ribs. My left hand is up saying, hey, I don't want anything. But what about if it's got a little bit more escalated and Chris has actually grabbed me? Now Chris is now grabbing me with his right arm. He's got a left-sided, my left-sided lapel grab. Now all I'm going to do with the crook facing forward, I'm going to slide my hand down halfway down the shaft, so I'm holding it roughly about mid-height. I've now got strikes, so using my right arm, shaft in the right hand, halfway down, I've actually got a strike to the head by doing almost the elbowing mechanism. So the arm's coming across the body, elbow's rising, I'm striking. I can then let the crook go forward with my right hand, so now the crook is over Chris's right shoulder. And then I can drag back. And this is just striking and dragging. I've got that. That's on a diagonal. As Chris said earlier on the video, you've got the punch. You've got the punch with the oscillation. So by extending my arm, part of the cane, either the crook or the tip, is going to hit. As soon as it hits, nature's going to take over. My wrist is going to slightly bend, and the next part of the strike is going to hit. And it oscillates top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. Also, with distance, once they're in this position, I prefer to use sticky cane. If you haven't seen the videos, I'll put a link up top about the sticky cane videos, where I can then just bring the cane over. So with my left hand, I've just put it on Chris's forearm, which is his right forearm, he's doing the gravity of the lapel again. Bringing the cane over, I can now have got two hands on my cane, I slide to tip and crook, and I've got the sticky cane, where I can just literally strike either end, push forward, do grabs and stuff from there. And again, Callum's in range. Callum's kind of a normal bystander. If I use the helicopter swing, it's going to take Callum out. So with this work, it is a lot of close-in work, and you can use your cane to do this. It's being aware, peripherally aware, of who's around. And if you're in a, a crowded environment and you have visual impairment, always err on the side that there's people around. If they're rushing into you, then whether you've got a cane or not, and you don't know they're rushing in, you're going to get the same result. They're going to get in, they're going to make contact. Once they've made contact, you can then start digging with it. But I understand what Mark has said on his video, that if you start swinging away and you're visually impaired, you've got a good chance of collateral damage with other individuals that are innocent. As you can see from this video, uh, there's quite a few different techniques you can use to gauge where your opponent is. Uh, and also, instructors, when you're teaching, use the reference points. You've got your high, your medium, your low, and using the 12 o'clock principle from Mark Brown is absolutely excellent, because we've all got a rough idea where these are. If, unlike Mark, your student has been blind since birth, and can't visualise a clock, then it's quite acceptable to ask permission if you can grab their hand. So you're then saying this is 12, this is 1, 2, 3, and move their arm about so they can then get a rough gauge where their, their body principles are. As always guys, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down, but please could you put in the comments why? so that we can then start working on these videos to make them better for you. Because our main aim is to get a community together so that we can help you and you can help us. So don't forget, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and give us a comment. As always, if you haven't done already, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell and free the fear.